Hey guys, welcome to the second episode of Reports on China. I'm Andy. Today we'll take a look at a recent BBC report suggesting that foreign vloggers living in China are spreading Communist Party disinformation by making videos with and for CGTN. The BBC's report has an overall dishonest tone, lacks journalistic integrity, and might just go against their very own charter, something that should make the Queen a tad irascible. I've worked with both the BBC and with CGTN, so keep watching for my thoughts. Let's get reporting. Hey, I'm Andy. I've always been obsessed with media. I started my own neighbourhood newspaper at 10, and my own TV channel at 15. At 19, I launched a national magazine that was available all over New Zealand. I worked for New Zealand politicians for a few years before our Prime Minister gave me a scholarship to come to China and study a master's degree in Chinese language and culture. I decided to stay, and now I'm a columnist and filmmaker in Shanghai. Come with me as I analyse how the world reports on China. The BBC recently released an article online titled The Foreigners in China's Disinformation Drive, where they zero in on a small group of British vloggers living in China and suggest they're nefariously taking the CPC's money to produce evil propaganda. But before we continue, don't forget to hit like and follow my channel. This will definitely help get this video seen by more people. The BBC's recent piece goes on to imply that foreign vloggers in China are part of a concerted effort to spread evil lies around the world. No, BBC, they're just foreigners who've lived here for years and years, love China, and are mad that Western media portrays this country in such a negative light. It's that simple. Clearly, the BBC have never heard of foreign writers and journalists like Edgar Snow and Israel Epstein and Rewi Ali, who use their work to help the world better understand China from right here in China decades and decades ago. The only difference is that today, foreigners in China prefer to use video to help the world see the real China. The piece goes on to say that foreign vloggers in China are attempting to counter what they call well-documented allegations of systemic human rights abuses on a huge scale in Xinjiang. Notice how they mention well-documented allegations and not well-documented evidence of human rights abuses. This is because they know, despite being unwilling to admit it, that the discourse around Xinjiang and Western media is based solely on external allegations and conjecture with absolutely zero indisputable facts. Let's be clear, China's already said the re-education centers existed, and there's no denying that terrorist attacks in the region and around China have been slashed since the creation of these centers. Today, China is a safer place, and I know that from firsthand. And let's not forget that centers set up for the rehabilitation of extremists exist all over the world. Have we all forgotten about Guantanamo Bay, where suspected terrorists are still locked up to this day without trial and are allegedly subjected to torture? In 2004, a Red Cross report was leaked claiming that widespread torture was taking place at the United States' Guantanamo Bay. One detainee, a man named Abu Zubaydah, told the Red Cross that he was subjected to torture, at one point having a wet cloth put over his face while water was poured on it so that he couldn't breathe. The Bush administration said these enhanced interrogation techniques were necessary, and one official reportedly said that if human rights were not violated, you probably aren't doing your job right. Shocking. Even Uyghurs have been imprisoned at Guantanamo Bay, which currently detains dozens of people without trial. Now, I mentioned before that the BBC was possibly going against its very own charter in its reporting. According to their most recent royal charter, signed off by Queen Elizabeth in 2016 and enacted in 2017, the BBC is required to provide accurate and impartial news to the highest editorial standards. Despite that, the BBC journalists who wrote this story ignore denials from those involved by stating in the second paragraph, as a matter of fact, that the vloggers are spreading Communist Party disinformation. Let's take a closer look at that part of the article. It's not attributed to anyone as a quote, which means it's being explicitly presented by the BBC as fact. And since it's not fact, Kerry Allen and Sophie Williams are being, at the very least, bad journalists. As someone who's worked with BBC and CGTN, I think I'm in a unique position. Naturally, both channels will only run content that they deem suitable for their audiences. In 2012, I won a young producers competition by BBC Knowledge to produce a short documentary. When I was writing my pitch, I considered at length topics that might suit BBC Knowledge as a way of increasing my chances. 
Because identity politics and PC culture have long been lauded in the West, I decided on an idea called Beneath the Wigs, interviewing men who perform as women. I won, and my documentary was screened dozens of times on BBC Knowledge. On the flip side, if I decided I wanted to pitch a documentary to the BBC about the achievements of the CPC or the destruction caused during the BLM riots in 2020, I'm sure they'd reject the idea. Likewise, when CGTN use my videos, they choose the ones that best fit their context, and they have every right to do so. That's why they approach online content creators who already produce the kinds of videos they're interested in, like those British vloggers. CGTN have never censored my work or told me I need to say a certain thing in my videos, and that's the same with all foreign vloggers whose videos they promote. But at the same time, I do need to consider the context of CGTN and coming up with ideas if I want them to be accepted, just like I had to do with BBC. This is nothing new. Like American journalist Edgar Snow showed with his groundbreaking reports from deep within China during the country's civil war, foreign voices will always be a valued and important way to tell real Chinese stories to the world. Contrary to what the BBC would like to have you believe, there are foreigners living in China who absolutely love this place and the Chinese people. And they're mad, to say the very least, that what they see while living here for years on end and what's reported in Western media often don't match up. Trying to label them as CPC operatives and propagandists just because they're trying to counter negative conceptions of China overseas is not only intellectually disingenuous, it's an insult. See you guys next time.